Orange County Register Business Reporter and Mortgage Insider Matthew Padilla joins us now for the Register Building in Santa Ana. Nice to have you with us again. Thank you, and glad to be here. Hey, what's going on with this Orange County housing market, good and bad? Well, the good is that there are less homes on the market right now. Uh, it's dropped down to close to 14,000. Earlier in the year, it was about 15,000, so that's a very good sign. Also, demand seems to be up in terms of uh, deals that are in the works uh, or were recently became in, in the works. That's nearly 3,000, uh, so another strong number. On the downside, though, uh, a lot more foreclosures and short sales. They are now something like six, almost 6,000 of those 14,000 homes on the market. So it's, it's a mixed picture right now. And talking about a mixed picture, a lot of people are confused, but I think someone we know has figured out a way that folks can get a little more about it. What is this new book? <laughs> Thank you. Can I just... There you yeah, go, yes. absolutely. Matthew, way to do it. Absolutely. <laughs> it's called Chain of Blame, How Wall Street Caused the Mortgage and Credit Crisis. And basically what it is is, is a look behind the headlines at the story. Uh, we focus a lot on Angelo Mozillo, the, the man who founded Countrywide Home Loans uh, and built that up into the largest lender in the U.S. At, at one point, Countrywide made one in every five loans in this country. Mm. Uh, we also tell the, the story of local subprime shops like AmeriQuest and New Century and kind of how they got so big and basically led America in this huge drive to make loans to people with a history of not paying their bills. So it's, it's, a, it's a great story. Well, t talk a bit about, if you would, I don't want to give everything away, but I'd have to read it to get all the, all the little, uh, little details on it. But the mortgage and, and the credit crisis, how, how did this all get started and how was it able to get so far out of control? Well, what happened was back in the um, 80s, the savings and loans um, that used to make home loans, you know, like in It's a Wonderful Life, the film we all love, they had their own problems and kind of had a big re retrenchment. And then Wall Street firms like Merrill Lynch and Bear Stearns said, hey, um, we're going to step in and, and buy loans. And the companies that made those loans, the top ones were here in Orange County, uh, AmeriQuest of Roland Arnall, New, New Century, Option One, and Fremont. Um, and those all appear in our book. Uh, and basically, we tell the story of how they formed this network with mortgage brokers getting the loans from consumers, and then the broker brings a loan to the lender like New Century. New Century sells that loan to Bear Stearns, and you have this chain of everyone making money and making the most money on the subprime loans because of the higher interest rates and fees. So we explain that whole process. Matthew, when, when you look at this, and I'm one that you know, I'll sit and read that you now have uh, Congress putting bills through to help folks out, and you know you want everyone to get help, but why was this not headed off a lot sooner? Well, that is a great question. You know, a, a savings and loans are re regulated very closely, but these mortgage banks that didn't take money from consumers in the form of checking and, and savings accounts, they were sort of in an unregulated world, in a sense. Um, they could kind of just do, <laughs> do what they wanted, and people weren't paying very close attention. The other aspect of it was that Alan Greenspan, when he was head of the Federal Reserve, he cut interest rates very aggressively, but he refused to get involved with regulating lending. And it, it hasn't been until after he left the Fed that the Fed is now making new rules for subprime lenders to follow. So, I mean, that's basically the key points there. It's a little bit where they, they're trying to, uh, I guess, kind of patch up what should have been patched up a long time ago. Is that, is that perhaps the case? That's... Uh, ex you know, ex exactly correct. I think the whole, well, n well m m maybe not all of it, but the U.S. has this history of deregulating industries like Ronald Reagan did with, with the thrifts, then that we find out that wasn't such a good idea, and then we re-regulate, and we're doing it again, and we'll probably do it again. So <laughs> we're just on that roller coaster. All right, and uh, folks can uh, log on to your uh, blog, which has some interesting stuff about distressed homes for sale and that type of thing. Uh, why don't you... Yeah, well, I think we've got the address right there. So uh, folks can get more information on your blog about uh, not only the stuff we've talked about, but a whole bunch more, right? Yes, ocregister.com slash mortgage. And yes, those distressed homes that, that I mentioned, 6,000, uh, there's a lot of them. And you're seeing a lot of them in the price points below uh, 500,000. And mm -hmm. it was Steve Thomas of Remax who gives us that re uh, report. Uh, he's basically saying that that's what's causing um, sales, actually, people finding good deals on those mm -hmm. foreclosed homes. Yeah, very Matthew, good. Matthew, thank you very much. Good luck with the book because uh, it's going to be some interesting reading. Thanks again.
Take care. All right. Thanks, Matthew.